There's a family Bible on the table It's pages torn and hard to read But the family Bible on the table Will ever be my key to memory At the end of day when work was over And when the evening meal was done Dad would read to us from Count our many blessings one by one And I can see us sitting round the table Went from the family Bible Dad would read And I can hear my mother softly sing Rock of ages, rock of ages, clear for me. This old world of ours is full of trouble But this world would also be If we'd find more Bibles on the tables Mother sang and rock of ages clear can see us sitting round the table When from the family Bible Dad would read And I can hear my mother softly sing Rock of ages, rock of ages, clear for and I can hear my mother softly singing Rock of ages, rock of ages, clear for me
storms around me rage and life's greatest trials I must face my ship is tossed seems all will be lost in the God of all comfort speaks peace to my soul in the God of all comfort speaks peace to my soul of seas are calm the winds is flow no matter how dark may be the night everything will be alright when the God of seas are calm, the winds is blown. No matter how dark may be the night, everything will be all right when the God of all comfort speaks peace to my soul. When the God of all
every failure, God, and you'll have every victory.
When no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eyes, all is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. What a day, glorious day. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through the promised land. What a day, a glorious day. There'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, no more pardon over there. Then forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day! Glorious day that will be. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me through. What a day, glorious day that will be. What a day, glorious day that will be. Now God spoke to Moses at the burning bush. Burning bush, burning bush. God spoke to Moses at the burning bush. Lying alone, thy God. So take your shoes off, Moses, your own holy ground. Holy ground, holy ground. Take your shoes off.
Yeah, I about open my son word of prayer. Yeah, like walking this morning, hick off the bad shirt. Proud to see everyone. Crowd looking better and better. We thank the Lord for it. You got any bulletin calendar events going on? Here's the service council for tonight. Still some dishes out on the nursery table from the Glenda Willis family. Brother Jake, got some free tapes out there if you want to tape. Uh, our regular church service starts back next Sunday, June the 7th. Our Sunday school service starts back on the 7th. But the children's church will not start till the 14th. Church conference will be that night, 14th. Got some on June 28th. Got plan for the uh, service for the 2020 graduates. If you got anybody included in that, please get their names no later than this Tuesday, June the 2nd, to the office. We got to have 15 to 20 pictures no later than June the 14th. If you want them to participate, we won't have reception this year due to the coronavirus. But we have tables set out front for them. If you want to give them cards or. or whatever, to recognize them. For you teachers, Sunday school literature is late. It should be here by the first of this week. If you'd like to pick it up, do you have it? If not, use the best book in the world, the Bible. You know, they won't even put it on the bestseller list because it's always a bestseller. In the United States, over 20 million copies sold every year. That's in the United States. Thank the Lord. I pray that me and everybody else that got them would read them more. Uh, the baby bottles out front used to be carrying that and that Skylark. I dropped them off on my, on Mother Day. If you can help fill it up with change or whatever, and they'll, they'll be due back Father's Day. The uh, once plan on going on our art trip, still on far as we know. Uh, the balance of that will be due July the 26th. And uh, we're going to try to have another plan meeting. We missed the one that we're supposed to have to talk about what's going on during that trip. Uh, again, I'd like to just thank you for being here this morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And, uh, see you back tonight. Thank you. And there will be choir practice at 5 o'clock. All right, this is Pentecost Sunday. I can hear somebody out there saying, Brother Scott, we're Baptist. Oh, no chuckles, no nothing. But anyway, that doesn't make any difference. Pentecost Sunday was, the Pentecost was the official start of the church. Are you part of the church? All right, then it's a good time to celebrate. Of course, those that receive the Holy Spirit are those that are saved. So let's stand to our feet and rejoice in our Savior. I found.
say so and you may be seated for just a few moments don't stop worshiping but I am glad that the choir has had a chance to practice and is ready to sing a song this morning talking about remembering all that God has done in our life We will remember. 
to your feet and sing with us again, declaring that in loving kindness Jesus came. Oh, praise his name. He lifted me. Folks on this side, turn that way. Folks on this side, turn that way. Wave at everybody you see on the other side. Say, good morning. It's so good to see you. Praise the Lord you're here this morning. Amen. I was sinking deep in sin, but Jesus lifted me. Yeah. 
his will obey. Be your Savior wants to be, be saved. Was a little man saying amen? Amen. He's got to be here every service. I need that. I really need that. Amen. It's good to see each one of you here today and uh, pray you've had a great week. The Lord's blessed us with a little shower of rain and whew, that's good for the crops, good for the grass, bad for the loggers. But anyway, uh, good to see you. We got to eat though, hadn't we? Amen. Turn in your Bibles with me to Jeremiah chapter 14. Jeremiah chapter 14. This is going to be a little unusual this morning. Uh, trying to change things up. The shape that our, our country's in. It's amazing how the domino effect has happened ever since this thing began. Uh, the pandemic and now the rioting, and uh, I'm not against the protesting. I'm against the rioting and the looting and, and all like that, but it's the mentality of mankind that I think has just went off the deep end. Uh, but God will prevail. God will prevail. We need to pray for all those situations. But when you close the houses of God, when you shut people away from being able to call on the one that has the answers uh, in, as a group, uh, things begin to happen. I'll tell you, when the day that they took uh, the Bible out of school, things started getting difficult in our school system. You take God out of America, things will get difficult in America. Uh, the hearts of men are desperately wicked and you'll know it. You'll see it. But as far as God's people, we don't have a care and a worry in the world. Amen. Today, Brother Scott sung a couple of songs talking about reaching down or sinking down and God lifting us up out of the, uh, the pits of, of hell. Well, I can tell you he did that when he saved you. And one day he's going to carry us home to be with the Lord. Amen. The Bible says and there we ever shall be with him. Amen. Ever is a long time. I've been to never, but I've never been to ever, okay? Don't you ever or never say that again. I've been there. Hope we don't have that again. If you found Jeremiah chapter 13, I want you to stand. I'm going to read four verses right quick and just kind of wet your whistle and uh, go into a very different style of message this morning. It says this, Thus said the Lord unto me. Jeremiah's getting instructions from God. He's, he's one that hears from God. He goes and tells the people what to do. The children of Israel again, as the United States and the people all over this world again, is in trouble. It says this. He, he said unto me, he says, go and get. Go and get. How many times is in the word of God where he says, go and tell, go and get. Listen to what he said. He says, go get thee a linen girdle. Now girls, hang on. A linen girdle, and put them upon thy loins, and put it not in water. So I got a girdle. Notice he, the Lord told him, and what did he do? He went and done exactly what he said. He said, so I got a girdle, according to the word of the Lord, and put it on my loins. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, Take the girdle that thou hast, thou hast got, which is upon thy loins, and arise, and go to Euphrates, and hide it there in a hole of the rock. Father, today as we come together, God, I pray, Lord, for all the sickness. I pray for all the sin sickness, God. I, uh, I pray for that most of all. 
God, if we could get that part right, God, we would have a better place. God, and I think a lot of things would go away. Help us, Father, as we stand in the gap, open our hearts and minds that we may hear from uh, your word and hear what you have to say to us today. God, we love you. And God, we look forward for you still taking care of us. You'll never leave us, never forsake us. And having said that, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Looking today in God's word, it's a kind of a strange thing that he says. Now, this girdle that we're talking about today, how many times in the Bible were you find that God's instructed, even some men of God instructed some men to do that, and it would say, girt thy loins, or girt, girt thyself. And, and today we're talking about the very thing that is going to girt, and it's the girdle. Uh, that's what it's called, and translation of that is basically a belt, or what you ladies may consider a sash. Not your spanks and not the old... Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Enough said. Uh, but anyway, having said all that, not that. So the Bible is, 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 every word in the Bible has a reason for what it says. And this, this girdle, I want to look at it uh, for a little bit before we get into God's word about this. The, the Bible's teaching us, and, and we, it appears in the Bible several different times about these girdles. Uh, we look at the material that they're made out of. A lot of those girdles in those days were made of linen, which would be a fabric type, maybe rope type, uh, sashes, or uh, some kind of belt. Uh, but we do also know that uh, in, in some cases, remember John the Baptist, he, the Bible tells us his girdle was of leather. Uh, like most men have uh, leather belts uh, on them, uh, so did John the Baptist. He, uh, one thing was for the durability of leather, uh, the durability that it could take. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes my belt gives me false, uh, uh, false readings. If it gets real sweaty, which it does a good bit, and uh, especially in the summertime, uh, and I have to bore another hole and take it up a little bit, I thought I may have lost weight. But what happens is when the wet leather gets wet with pressure on it, it's stretched. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, just a thought out there, guys. I, I didn't want to take you thunder, but that's what's going on. Uh, but anyway, but today we're going to look at this girdle, and he wanted it to be made of linen. Now, being in the position that Jeremiah was in, not that he was a wealthy man, or, or it didn't matter about his wealth, but a lot of times in those days, uh, uh, captains, soldiers, uh, people, priests, uh, some people in higher uh, authority, uh, this would be made out of fine linen. It would be made out of quality material. So uh, as you ladies know, the higher the quality of the material, uh, the, the, the more you have to pay attention to how you take care of it. Uh, you wouldn't throw some things right into the dryer. You, never, you, you ever read them tags that says dry clean only? And, uh, well, if you don't, then whatever. But uh, dry clean only. So uh, here in this, in this particular scripture, uh, digging up and reading about it, this particular girdle that, that um, Jeremiah went to get, Jeremiah had a girdle. He had one. They all, about everybody had one in those days. I mean, he, he had to have one. But this was for a specific reason. Some scholars believe that he went and got one of the finest linens, uh, girdles that money could buy. He went and got one because why? Because the Lord uh, specifically wanted this linen. And, you know, God deserves the best. Some linens in those days would actually have uh, tassels on the end of them that rep represented many things. This don't mention that, but we know the man of God went and got a girdle. And his instruction was to get it. And uh, I want you to look in verse 1 at the bottom end of that thing. It says, put it not in water. Put it not in water. So he got this, this girdle and uh, he went and got it and he didn't put it in water. Well, why is it? What does it mean? It means he says, uh, don't wash it. Don't wash it. You know, uh, uh, let me ask you ladies a question. Some of you guys may know. Uh, what effect does washing have on your clothes? Other than that? Fades, thins, gets old. 
you know, when I start pulling on my T-shirts and they begin to rip, my wife has literally went in there and says, you ain't wearing this no more. If you have a wreck and they see the hole in your T-shirt, they're going to think we don't have anything. And she goes, <laughs> so over time, what happens? Y'all ever done that, the underwear? Yeah. Anyway, I just say, don't lift your hands up. We're on TV here. But when you look at what he did, he says, don't do that. I want it at its purest point. I want it at its strongest point. He says, so don't wash it. Don't wet it. Now, we don't know how long that Jeremiah put it on. But because he said, do not put it in water, uh, we can assume from that that he wore it for a good while. We don't know how long he wore it, but he, he definitely put it on. Because he needed it, and this was a special one. Some indicate that maybe that Jeremiah uh, had his own and went and got this one and maybe put it under his garments. But I, I, don't, I don't know if I go along with that. I believe he took the one he had, took it off, and put this one on that the Lord told him to wear. Okay? That's what I believe. And, uh, uh, and it just kind of goes along with the scriptures. And in verse 2, he says, so when the Lord told him, he says, so I got me one. He says, and I put it on my loins. Well, uh, this morning, um, I got to, I'm, I want to do a share demonstration with you. I got me a bag. My wife, she was, she was very inquisitive this morning. When I asked for a bag and then I had which I don't wear a lot, my house coat. My, this is my house coat. I ain't going to tell you who she says I look like when I put this on, but she's very charming. A lot of the material in the coats and stuff that men wore in those days, even pictures of Jesus, some went on, a lot went on just like I got. Just, just like this. And some went on pacho type form. You know what I'm saying? Had the head, a place for the arms to come out, and they would droop them over the head. But yet the important thing was the girdle. Now, you ladies would call it a sash because y'all steer away from calling it a girdle because we know where girdles are really at, right? And we know the purpose of girdles. The purpose of this girdle, unlike the one that you ladies wear that try to hide things that are really not true. Oh, did I say that? I don't even know if this sash will come off of this thing. It won't. It will. No, it won't. It's sewed on there, but nevertheless. So without the, without the girdle, I want to give you a picture of what Jeremiah's doing. He went and got his new sash. He went and got his new girdle, and he put it on, and the importance of the new girdle was for him to keep it girded all the time. The importance of the girt here was that if I didn't have this and I had nothing under here, it would be very important that I had a good girdle. Sometimes the Bible says that when men were asked to go in haste, they would take the girdle because what they had on a lot was like dresses or like this so they could run a lot freer by gathering all this stuff up. They would do it as such. But today we're talking like this. The girdle is very important. Don't wash it. Don't wet it. You wear it until I say different. Now, here's what he told him, verse 3. And the word of the Lord came to him the second time, saying, He says, Take the girdle that thou hast got, you have went and bought, he says, which is upon thy loins, and arise and go to Euphrates, and hide it there in a hole of the rock. Now, let me explain. So, he's told him to take that one off and go to Euphrates. From where he is, it's several days' journey to Euphrates. And it's the river Euphrates. And he says, you go and you hide it in a rock. He says, and you place it there. Don't you know if that was you and I, we're going, Lord, what in the world? That's a brand new girl. I got to walk for days to go put that thing there, and whatever in the world the meaning of it is, I do not know. But notice he did not question God. 
He took that girdle. So from when he left to when he got back, he was without a girdle. He was without the sash. He was without that. So he was kind of flopping in the wind and everything. And so he was not protected. He was not hidden. He was not none of those things. Listen. And, and he hid this thing in the rock. He says, so I went and hid it by the Euphrates as the Lord commanded me. And it came to pass after many days. We don't know how many days. After many days. He says that the Lord said unto me, Arise and go to Euphrates and take the girdle from thence which I commanded thee to hide there. Then I went to Euphrates and I digged. I digged. Now, we're not, we don't know that he dug a hole. The Bible says that he was supposed to hide it in the rocks. But being as it's on the Euphrates, the tide would come and go and come and go that to the point that even where he placed this thing, what God says shouldn't happen to that, get wet, it got wet. It got wet. It was no longer under the watch care of Jeremiah. And he hid it where he told him to hide it. But it was wet. He says, so he, di- he digged. He took the girdle from the place where he had hid it. And behold, the girdle was marred and was, not, was profitable for nothing. Oh. Now, spiritually speaking, I want to share more about this linen girdle. If you look at it from the spiritual meaning of what that represents, and especially with the children of Israel and what Jeremiah was getting this memorandum from God uh, to try to tell and explain to the people. You say, why, why did God speak in so many story forms? Because some people understand story forms better than they will spiritual forms. Once they understand the, the, the physical uh, story, they will actually start getting what, and y'all wondering right now where this is going, aren't you? I know a lot of you guys is already get sometimes when the Word of God gets going, you're going, oh, I know where this is going. But I don't know that you know for sure yet. You should be getting a lot warmer than you was when I first started. But he went and found this precious linen. And in spiritual form, God represents the girdle. God represents the outer coating that we have on is the representation of being born again, being covered by God. But what holds us there? What, what, what binds us together? The thing that binds us together is very important. You know, it's more, uh, if you, I don't take it the wrong way, maybe a little more important than the garment itself. Because if the garment can't stay on you, then what good is the garment? And that's what happened. This is the illustration that he gave him. He says, my people, my people is treating me just like this. They have went and worshipped and, and been satisfied with other gods, taking up uh, whoredoms and, and pagans and just all kind of stuff. They have uh, taken me away, which he represents the, the girdle itself. And he says, and they have put me somewhere uh, that I am not profitable to them. I'm not profitable. Let's just look and see what it says. He says, The girdle was marred and it was not profitable. Then the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, He says, Thus saith the Lord, after this manner, I will mar the pride of Judah and great pride of Jerusalem. What did he say? Let me, let me give you an illustration of this, what, 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 what you've what you got to kind of focus on here. If you don't have uh, a very good sash... If you don't have uh, a very good relationship, if you will, if you don't uh, stay close uh, and, and keep strengthening and watch this girdle, I'll tell you what happened to me the other day. Don't y'all laugh. I mean, I wear a belt till this wore out. Because eventually it's kind of like a pair of leather boots. If you get them wet and wear them dry and get them wet and wear them dry, they fit like a glove. Amen, guys? But I hate to break in a brand new pair of boots. I got a pair that I've had since Christmas or before. 
and I need to be aware of my other ones is coming apart. I dread the breaking in part. It's kind of like when God first comes into our life and he, we had our own girdle and we take it and do what we want to, but when we got saved and, and when God's people come into the covenant with Moses and the covenant of, of what God had told them, walk the straight and narrow way and you do this, he says, and I'll be your girdle. And I will, I will protect everything if you will just let me be close to you. Let me tighten down. You need to tighten down. You know what that means. Walk the straight, you know, narrow is the way and narrow is the gate that lead us to uh, the, the path of righteousness for Jesus Christ goes to heaven. He says, you let me do that. You're, this is no more better than this. But what happened here? They, they decided to do other things. So what they done, they took God off of their their, their mantle. They took God out of the picture and they started flirting with other things. And when you go back and look after he left it there in the cleft of the rock and it got wet, he says it's marred and it's not fit for anything. What is he telling them here? Not that God's not fit for anything, but the relationship has been broken. The, the covenant has been broken. The vow has been broken. The walk has been broken. You went astray, but all of a sudden you get in distress and all of a sudden you want to call on him and you want him to wrap his arms around you and when you do that, it breaks. It just falls apart. It's marred. It, it, it is no good. It's profitable for nothing. He said, if you'd have just walked with, if you'd have just let me, if you'd have wore this thing, you know, if you'd have just took this thing and kept it around you, this would not have happened. And notice what he says he's going to do. He says he's going to take the pride of Judah and Jerusalem. Now, if I didn't have anything on today, and I cinched down on it and this thing broke, and it went like that, my pride, will be taken from me. I got to take that thing off. I'm about to burn up. My pride, my modesty, the people in me, the person in me will just be humiliated. I would no more be able to hold my head up. I wouldn't know where y'all couldn't look at me the same. I couldn't look at you the same. That's why the Bible talks about the men in the Bible seeing their dads nakedness and all this kind of stuff we've talked about before. But I'm telling you, you wouldn't be the same. And this is what he's telling them. He says, because you have allowed the, the God part of the girdle to be marred by your way of life, by not caring for it and protecting it and, and using it and keeping it to you and keeping a close walk on you. He says, it is marred and it is fit for nothing anymore what a sad day you said brother Jamie you sound like losing your salvation no I'm not talking about that at all I can tell you what you can die and go to heaven and have a bad walk with God I'll tell you that but I can tell you what your walk down here will be marred it'll be tough it, you know it, it, don't don't yeah. Some people just want fire insurance. Listen, I want a life while I'm living full of joy and peace and happiness knowing that I can call on a heavenly father at any moment and he can hear me and answer me. But if my girdle is marred, he will not hear until I get back into the fold of God. And the people here, he said, I will, I will take their pride. You know what happens to a lot of people? You know what prison does to some people? I wouldn't say everybody. Prison breaks them. It breaks them. My dad's lost his hearing for a long time. He hears better now than he can see. It's breaking him, and he's listening. And I cry. But I know it's not the end. It's not the end. But it is a humbling experience. Not just for him, but for me. And let me tell you, that walk without God, when he decides to say, okay, enough is enough, I will, I will not come to you. 
I will not hear you. I will not respond to you. For the girl is marred. Verse 10 says, This evil people which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imaginations of their hearts. Could you tell me right now that your mind is wicked? Do you see things in this life that you go through and you have a bad thought? Does sin crept in between these two eyeballs and get into your brain and then involve the imagination of your heart. There's some places me and you don't need to go. Mardi Gras is one of them. Because the imaginations of your heart will grow wicked. The casinos will, will just put you down in the pits of hell. You say, oh, Brother Jamie, I, oh, Brother Jamie, you know, I know. Not only that, there's some places in this world you couldn't go, you shouldn't go just because of the things that go on there. Because of the imagination of your heart. There's a lot of things that I can control that physically that I won't do. But you let something come by in front of these two eyes that enter into this heart. I have to make physical changes immediately or my imaginations will run wild. And I'm not the only one in here. This evil people which refuse to hear my words, which refuse to wear the girdle. He says, uh, which walk in the imagination of the heart and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them and shall, and shall even be as this girdle, which is good for nothing. What are you saying? We walk out there long enough and we're not taking care of the girdle and watch the girdle for what it does and, and, and praise and worship the girdle and praise God for what he done. And now it is marred and it is no good. You have broke your connection to God, your relationship to God. Is there a way back? Absolutely there's a way back. But you've got to get back. You just can't cry out from the pits of hell and he puts you right up on your feet uh, without uh, saying a word every time you do that. Because your heart wants you to go that way. And if your heart and the imagination of your mind is one that hadn't been baptized and been cleaned up, that has to come first. He has to bring you to an open shape. He has to bring your, uh, your pride. He has to break that to a point. What happens when someone gets saved? The very thing I just said. You have to admit, you have to self-admit to yourself that you are a sinner, rotten to the core, going your way to hell and not fit for the kingdom of heaven. Then you ask a, a, a wonderful Savior who died on the cross for your sins, ask Him to forgive you of those things for what He has done and to cleanse you for all unrighteousness and put your feet on the right path. Then you shall reap the rewards of glory. Verse 11 says, For the girdle cleaveth to his loins of a man. So have I caused to cleave unto the whole house of Israel, and to the whole house of Judah, saith the Lord, that they might be unto me a people, and for a name, and for a praise, and for a glory. But they would not hear. What does God want us for? Priest war certain kind of sashes. They even made blankets and had tassels. And tassels represented the tribes and, and all the many events that went on. They, they'd have them all on there. It, they, they, they meant something. When we wear this, this says that God is our fortress. God is my strength. God is my redeemer. He says, when you have that, then you'll have all the qualities. He says, I wanted the glory of praise. I wanted the glory and honor. I wanted all the... He said, but you would not listen and you would not hear me. Therefore, 
I cannot hold you together if you won't allow me to. Your garment is no, no more better than the girdle that holds it on. It's sad in the world today. I do it around the house sometimes just to aggravate Jan. Because I've lost so much weight, some of my pants are a little too big. Don't laugh. They just, they just got bigger. And my pants will get in there and she'll call me saggy drawers. But it's something in America today that our ladies' tops can hang down to here. And our men's britches can hang down to here. It is a disgrace. And spiritually, without that sash holding your drawers up, you're a disgrace to the kingdom of God. I'm a disgrace to the kingdom of God. We never think of it that way. Do you know if we profess to be one thing, you sitting here this morning and everybody else, and not just you, I'm not getting on you, I'm talking about the church as a whole, sitting here this morning and we do these things. Hey, there's stuff going on in the world right now. I don't know why in the world that the Christians ain't protesting. Hello? You say, well, how do you do that? Well, you call your representative, you call your uh, uh, senator, you, 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 you call this and you call that and you get out there and you call on the people who we pay to go out there for. You, you just, you do all that and make a lo- loud noise. Somebody asked me this morning, I think, I don't remember who it was, said, hey, did you get a letter that the governor said that we couldn't open up and have Sunday school? I'm tired of the governor, okay? I don't answer to the governor. I don't want to do anything to jeopardize anybody like this, but if you want to come to the house of worship and worship your God in spirit and in truth who has uh, the keys to death, hell, and the grave and who, he is a giver of life, then you come if you want to. If they cannot look over us Christians wanting to assemble ourselves together and worship a God that died for us, they need not look over those people that vandalized those buildings and took folks' livelihood and stole and carried it home. It's time to get a backbone. It's time to gird up your loins with the Word of God, with the power of God, and take your pride and give it to Jesus. He lost his pride. When he was stripped naked before his mama and then hung on a cross before his disciples, And took a beating and he called himself the son of God who has power. He took himself, he swallowed. When a man walked to him, he says, if you are who you say you are, get yourself down from there. Well, I'm going to tell you, he's going to come down from there. (laughs) Oh, I think very soon. And let me tell you, that person who said that and those don't believe in him right there, they're going to find out who he is. But until then, we need to tie our belt tight. We need to put our girdle on. I'm going to end in this. We call it a belt. The ladies have spanks, girdles, control top. Y'all know what I'm saying. Why do we do that? We falsify something that we're not. Which is fine with me. I'm just using this as a situation. If you got yours on this morning, praise the Lord for it. But Jesus says in his word, on the spiritual girdle, it don't misrepresent nothing. It represents the truth. And what that girdle does for most of us, it'll hold you up. It'll make you look good. It'll cover up all the bad stuff you don't want nobody else to see. Because our sins is put under the blood of Jesus Christ. And he said never to be remembered no more. Tighten your belt.
get a closer walk with the man and the girl so it won't fall off or slip off. Keep it clean. If you lose it for a while, I had a backup built. It's still at the house somewhere. The other day, I didn't ever finish telling you about my built. That built, matter of fact, it was curved just like me. It wasn't flat. If you set it on the table, it was kind of billied out like that, you know, where it fits right here. Man, it was perfect. You couldn't put it on backwards. Wouldn't fit. Man, I liked it. I already had the extra holes cut in it. You know, it used to be that wide and down there on the end with the buckle is it done by that wide? Man, it was perfect. Because I want my pants to stay up. Okay. But I was out in the woods working and I had to put my Chaps got loops that go over them to keep, you know, briars and snakes off of me. I sat them things on there. And I bent over like this right here to zip my chaps up. And there was a pressure release. I said, oh, boy. I said, well, I broke a belt loop. No. Where that, where that belt was buckled and sewed to my buckle. I mean, that thing must be 10 years old. It had dry rotted. And it had took all the pressure it could take. And it... Poof. I did not like the feeling working that day without my belt. Nor should I walk one day without the Lord. So I went and got me a substitute. Jesus Christ. He was my substitute. He took my place. And the anchor holds. And his grip is as solid as a rock. Provided I do my part. He's done his. Let's tighten our relationships up. Let's gird ourselves to the word of the Lord. And let's behold and be fast together. In the name of Jesus, okay? Let's stand together. Father, we thank you. We praise you. You want what's best, God. And God, we should want what you want. God, I thank you for this illustration. It just lets us know even more without you, we can do nothing. God, we thank you, Lord, for holding us up. God, we thank you for t toting us and carrying us, Lord, when we can't even walk ourselves. When the old body decays, God, you're still there. God, when our mind wanders, you're still there. Let us not walk far from you. Help us today, Father, to realize how important it is to have a close walk with you. Lord, if there's one here today who's had not had that walk that they should, God, the maybe they need to come to the altar and Get a few things out of the way and retie that girdle. And God, maybe there's one here that's just living without one. The only hope they have in this life is the things that this life has to offer, which is nothing. It is profitable for nothing compared to eternity. God, I pray they find their girdle. His name's Jesus. Have your will and way, Holy Spirit, as you deal with hearts today. In Jesus' name, amen.
just works out everything, don't you? I couldn't have picked out a better song to end this message up with than that song right there. And it ended that last that last little phrase in there, stanza, whatever you call that thing. Why do we want all these things? Because ultimately we want to see Jesus. We got to live like it. We got to walk like it. If you want to see if not, then who are you expecting to come for you? I expect nothing best but the best. Him. I hope you have a good day. Hope you get a nap. Hope you eat well. And I hope you come back tonight. So, Brother Jeremy, I don't know if I could take another one of them. I don't know if I could take to give you another one of them, but I'm going to try if the Lord lays it on my heart. Okay. Amen. Amen. I love y'all. Thank you for coming today. I really, really do. I'm going to ask Sister Carolyn if she would dismiss us. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this message that we've heard this morning, Lord. Not a great message, but you said for what's going on in our country today that, that we may open our eyes that we may see you. God, so many people have such a need of you. We need a Savior in our country. Yes, oh God. Thank you. Can't wait to get back to hear more.